Hey guys, welcome to the new release of Auto Smear, my newest and actually first add-on. Basically what this does is it just gives you smears for your objects automatically with full controllable parameters. You can do it for meshes and armatures. I don't want to make this intro too long, so let's just hop straight into Blender so I can show you how to use it. Okay, so now that I'm in Blender, you can see I've just got some balls with some really simple animation. One's bouncing up and down, one's going to the side pretty fast. And if I want to open up my add-on, I can just hit N and then locate the auto smear panel. And then you'll see a bunch of buttons, but you can't click any of them until you import the required assets. And then when you do that, you'll see no tree successfully imported. And then you can click on your object and just hit smear selected mesh. And then you'll see it'll create a duplicate of your mesh, put it in a hidden collection. And then it's going to add a geometry nodes tree to your object with that delayed object in the delayed object property. So now if we play this, this ball is already going to be smearing. Not very much right now. So I think I want to change my smear multiplier to like two. Uh, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. All right. So you can see we've got some smearing now. Um, and everything about this is controllable. Like I said, you can change the radius of where it smears. You can see it starts at the middle and then it goes out. And then you can also change the minimum distance that it has to travel to smear. These two are very similar, but they're kind of different. They just have different use cases, so I decided to put them both in there just for more customizability. And then you have the smear probability, which just makes, obviously, the smears uh, more or less prevalent. And then you have the seed, where you can change just the seed of what it does. Uh, you can subdivide them, but I would be wary with this because it subdivides the whole mesh. You can see if I turn off subdivision. So I would recommend not doing this unless you really need to. And you can also change the subdivision level. But like I said, I would recommend not doing that. And then you can also do vertex groups with this. So you can control exactly what smears. I'll be showing you that in a little bit though. So let me show you with this one, with this other ball as well. Hit smear selected mesh. And boom. Got some smears, and that already looks good, to be honest. I don't really see any settings I need to change there. And there's a couple other settings for meshes. You can also update the animation. So let's say I wanted this to also move on the X position. I can just move it, set a new location keyframe, and you'll see it's animated. But the smears are going in the wrong direction. So all I have to do is hit Update Smear Animation, and it will go in the correct direction now. So yeah, that works pretty well. And you can also undo mesh smearing, which just deletes the duplicate and clears the modifier. And you can also do all of these three while selecting multiple objects. So that's the mesh smearing. I'm going to hide this collection and go to my characters so I can show you armature smearing. I have two armatures here. One of them is just doing a punch and the other is doing a running motion. Let's start with the punch. Uh, so the way I can do this is I select the armature, not anything underneath. I select the armature and then I hit smear selected armature and that'll smear all of the objects that are connected to the armature. So now if I hit play, it's going to be pretty intense and it's happening kind of everywhere right now. Um, so I can change some settings here. I'm going to change the radius to like three maybe. I'm going to turn the minimum distance up to like four. Uh, Smear probability, I'm going to turn that down just because this is a denser mesh than the balls and it is based on the vertexes in your mesh. So the denser the mesh, the smaller the smears are going to be, if that makes sense. I think that's all I'm going to change for now. Let's see how this looks now. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There's very few smears except for on the punch. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so let's do this running one now. Um, we're going to hit smear selected armature. And that's kind of looking crazy right now. Uh, it's a lot of smearing. So what I'm going to do is basically the same thing as I did for the last one. Is I'm going to... I'll just do the same settings. Alright, let's see how this looks. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So now it's mostly just smearing on the very fast moving parts. As you can see. But let's say on this mesh, I don't want the, he I don't want the head to smear. Now if you can't get it to work with just these settings, what I can do is I can click on my armature, or not my armature, sorry, mesh, and go into edit mode. And if I don't want the head to smear, I can hit L on the head, 
uh, and that will select the entirety of the linked object. It'll be a little harder if your whole mesh is connected because you have to select everything individually. But anyways, so now I'm going to hit control I to invert that selection and control G assign to new group. So now we have a vertex group with everything but the head in it. And now we can put that in our vertex group. And by default, that group will just be called group. Mine's called group 002 because I already have some other ones called group from just testing, but you'll see nothing happens. And that's because we need to set this use vertex group setting to one. If we change that, you'll see nothing changes except the head smearing disappears. So you can really fine tune what you want to smear and where you want it to happen and everything. And all of these settings are keyframeable, by the way. So you can change how much it smears and when you can change the radius, you can change the seed probability, everything about it is animatable. So that's great. That's pretty much it for this demo. So real quick, I actually didn't cover everything. There's one more thing I need to cover, and that's how to make your smears a different material than everything else. So you can see here, I'm in basically the same scene as before, and I can just make, in my shader editor, a new attribute node. If I just look up attribute and make one of those, and then type smear underscore mask. It has to be like this, um, spelling and capitalization obviously matters. And then if I just control shift and click on this with the node wrangler add on, you can see here we get a mask of our smears from black at the mesh to white at the actual end of the smear. So we can use this to like make an emission shader and I can mix that with the principal shader and then use this color as the factor. And then if I view this, let's make the emission shader like red and turn it up. You can see now, uh, let me make this EV go to bloom rendered view. You can see now we've got some glowing smears. So that's how you do that. And that's how I made the smears a different material in that animation I showed at the start of the video. So yeah, now I've actually covered everything. And this file will be available in the description. If you just want to play around with it, it'll also be there when you download the add on on Gumroad except it won't have the characters because these aren't CC0. These are like Mixamo animations and I don't think I can redistribute those. So it'll just have these ball animations, but they'll still be good for you to play around with. I hope you enjoy this add-on. I hope you create some cool things with it. And yeah, more updates to come in the future.